Uh, now let's have a closer look at sun shading technology and corresponding retroreflective efficiencies. Glass beads are not very efficient retroreflectors. Plus, their round shape leaves spaces between the beads, creating areas that are not retroreflective at all. The resulting retroreflective efficiency for engineer grade is about 8%. This means that only 8% of the light from headlights entering engineer grade sheeting is returned back to drivers at night. High intensity prismatic features truncated cube microprismatic optics. These are triangular shaped optical elements, which are essentially cube corners sliced to form a triangular base. Sheetings that future truncated cube corners have nearly 32% retroreflective efficiency. This is a fourfold increase over engineer grade. Note that all microprismatic sheetings on the market today, except 3M's DG cube sheeting, feature truncated cube optics similar to high intensity prismatic. DG cube sheeting uh, with nearly 58% retroreflective efficiency has the highest in the sign sheeting market today uh, and it owes its performance to its full cube optics design. DG cube is nearly twice as bright as high intensity prismatic. While DG cube is the highest performance sheeting, uh, high intensity prismatic still offers substantial improvements over engineer grade in brightness and visibility. From a driver's needs perspective, engineer grade sheeting with its 8% efficiency is inadequate for many sign applications. That brings us to the Federal Highway Minimum Sign Retroreflectivity Rule. The Federal Highway recently published its final rule requiring maintenance of traffic signs above a certain retroreflectivity level as shown in this table. To ensure that signs exceed these minimums, agencies are required to establish a sign management or assessment method by January 2012. Uh, within three years thereafter, all signs except street name and overhead guide signs should be compliant. Street name and overhead guide signs have an additional three years uh, by January 2018 to be in compliance. Engineer grade is shown in the first column. The red shaded cells in the table show the applications for which the use of engineer grade sheeting is either prohibited or limited. The rule prohibits use of engineer grade in many applications such as warning signs, construction and work zone signs, and guide sign legends. Engineer grade use is allowed for uh, guide sign backgrounds. However, remember that retroreflectivity degrades over time and signs made with engineer grade may fall below the minimum levels quickly uh, after only a few years of use. The use of engineer grade is also allowed on white on red signs such as stop, yield, and do not enter signs, and black on white signs, such as speed limit signs. White on red series require a minimum retroreflectivity coefficient of 35 candela per lux per meter square for the white portions of the sign. Uh, for black on white signs, the retroreflectivity requirement is 50 candela per lux per meter square. Uh, you may have many questions about this rule and this particular table. For more information, uh, please visit the Federal Highway website at www.fhwa.dot.gov slash retro, or you can visit www.minimumreflectivity.org. Now let's have a look at how engineer grade and high intensity prismatic comply with the Federal Highway Minimum Rule. Uh, per the ASTM standard specification D4956, engineer grade only meets type 1, which requires 70 candela per lux per meter square when brand new. Engineer grade uh, typically has a 7 year life cycle. At the end of 7 years, it should retain 50% of its original reflectivity, which is 35 candela per lux per meter square. Uh, notice that this is the minimum requirement for stop signs. However, it is below the requirement for black on white signs, which was 50 candela per lux per meter square. Uh, most importantly, using engineer grade on the permitted sign series may necessitate uh, routine retroreflectivity assessment within a few years after installation, because engineer grade signs can fall below the minimums rapidly. Uh, the need for annual evaluations uh, may require additional sources in terms of equipment and personnel and further consume budgets. 
3M's high-intensity prismatic sheeting meets ASTM specifications 3, 4, and 10. The type 10 requirement for, for a new material uh, is 560 candela per lux per meter square. High-intensity prismatic will also retain at least 70% of this initial retroreflectivity after 10 years of outdoor use. So high-intensity prismatic will provide more than 392 candela per lux per meter square at the end of a 10-year life cycle. It will comfortably exceed the retroreflectivity requirements for any given sign type after 10 years. With these life cycles in mind, let's look at the economics of using engineer grade and high-intensity prismatic. A recently published federal highway study identifies a life cycle cost as the most representative cost measure for traffic signs. The study recognizes that sheeting is only a very small part of the total sign cost, uh, with the majority of costs coming from labor, hardware, administrative, and other expenses for each installed sign. Uh, the study states that when labor, administrative, and other expenses are considered, what appears to be the more expensive option in the beginning is the less expensive option in the end. Let's apply this to an example considering the useful life cycles for engineer grade and high intensity prismatic uh, while factoring in the sheeting, hardware, and labor costs. Let's assume that engineer grade sheeting costs 75 cents per square foot and high intensity prismatic costs $1.50. Let's also use the cost per sign of $150 from the Federal Highway Study. Sign sheeting cost for a 9 square foot sign is then $6.75 for engineer grade and twice as that, which is $13.50 for high intensity prismatic. Uh, but you add the $150 cost for hardware, labor, and administrative expenses and the total cost for the engineer grade sign is then $156.75 versus $163.50 for the high intensity prismatic sign. Now distribute these costs over 7 years for engineer grade and 10 years for the high intensity prismatic. The engineer grade sign costs $22.39 per year, while the high intensity prismatic sign costs about $6 less, $16.35. That is nearly 30% less than engineer grade. Six dollars may seem like a small savings, but if you have 1,000 signs to maintain, the difference adds up to $60,000 over 10 years. For the price of a small initial investment, you will have a much brighter sign that lasts longer and provides better safety for your driving public.